This is One on One. My name is Jesse, I have leukemia. I'm Catherine and I have thyroid cancer. And my name is Zach and my older brother Lucas was diagnosed with brain cancer when I was nine years old. I'm the director of the family support program for Friends of Karen. We provide support from the time the child's diagnosed. My little brother's name is Fola huh? and he has a blood disorder called sickle cell. Our goal really is to make a family's life as, it's never easy. Um, you want chocolate milk? but as manageable and as normal as possible when they're dealing with the critical illness of one of their children. It's a great organization, and the executive director is with us right here. We're honored at Public Broadcasting to welcome Judith Factor, who's the executive director of Friends of Karen. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Karen McGinnis, 16 years of age from Westchester County, um, diagnosed with a rare disease. Talk about her and the organization. Well, the organization was founded by a woman named Sheila Peterson. She was just a kind neighbor who wanted to help her friend bring home the, her terminally ill daughter to live out the Karen. end of her. That was Karen. That was Karen McGinnis. What year was that? Back that in the 70s, late 1978. 70s? Right. Um, Karen would be in her 50s now. And I'm still in touch with Karen's mom. And Sheila just wanted to help them bring Karen home. So she said, she was the original uh, social media person. She promoted Karen's plight in the newspaper and kind people in the Northern Westchester community who knew Karen and didn't know Karen, but just were, just were compassionate and wanted to help, contributed about $36,000. And that paid for Karen's round the clock care for the 11 months that she lived. And Sheila believes saw the impact on Karen's family's life. She said when you provide emotional and financial support to families mm. with a catastrophically ill child, then they have more time to love. That was Sheila Peterson. That was Sheila Peterson. Who helped her found it. Now today, describe the organization, because it's vast. Uh, I live over in New Jersey, and there are three hospitals in New Jersey with children, you said, uh, uh, pediatric oncology. Right. Uh, programs. There are hospitals in Connecticut. There are hospitals in New York. So it's the tri-state region, correct? Correct. We we help about 600. I think in 2015, 669 families that had 1,010 siblings. So that was over 1,600 children that we supported. How do you help? We do everything. We look at every family's different. Every family has their own story, and I think that's one of the great things about Friends of Karen. We meet a family where. They are. Of course, illness is the great equalizer. Um, but primarily, the families come to Friends of Karen through the social workers at the hospitals. And we work with every major hospital in the tri-state area that has pediatric oncology. What do and people need? People oh, the need Let's talk about the money first. Well, I was looking at our statistics today. About 56% of our families have incomes below $35,000 and more than a quarter below $20,000. So imagine annual having income? annual income. So many families come to us with a financial need. And we look at the impact of the illness on the family's income. About 90% of families have some um, employment interruption when they have a sick child. And we have many families that are just single parents. So you can imagine if you have an ill child no, and you want to I'm be sorry, by their me. side. I'm sorry, explain the cost, because you say, could you imagine? I'm trying to right now, and I, I, I want people to understand. The what average cost is, of yeah. a child having cancer is about $500,000. That's what it cost. Cancer is a very expensive illness. $500,000? Yes, it is. You know, in many families, we look at, you know, families are just making it. And we look at what we can do. So we pay um, rent, mortgage. We get them stabilized, especially if a family comes to us soon after their child is diagnosed. Sometimes they don't come to us till their child has relapsed. Sometimes they don't come to seek our help. It's very hard for people to ask for help. 
and maybe not until their child is almost at end of life. And we come in with it. each family has a social worker that's assigned to them, a very skilled um, professional, so that they have, becomes almost like a member of their family. And they're always, they visit them in their homes or in the hospital, and they get to know them, and they do what they can for each family, whether it's paying their mortgage, providing rent, helping with hospital bills. It may be helping them access other support, maybe getting them on Medicaid for ill children, whatever is available to them. Most the people siblings? don't know. So well, we have siblings? a sibling support program. What does that, that, that mean? What it means is that when a brother or a sister is has cancer, or sometimes we have kids with brain tumors or heart transplants, I mean, you can imagine, we say life-threatening illness. A parent is absent from the home for long periods of time. Kids could be in the hospital for six months, eight months, or more. There's no parent at home. A child is neglected. Sometimes a child feels guilty and thinks they created cause. They need help. Oh, hugely. Just stay right there. We're going to actually run a clip um, about the support program for, it's actually called the Sibling Support Program. We do. Let's it, take a look at Friends of Karen. And I'll never forget Darius saying, is my sister going to die? And not realizing that an 11-year-old would even think about that or know about that. We come in with our uh, sibling support program and raise awareness. Every Saturday, Melinda came in. She, like, bonded with Jake. It was amazing, his attitude after Melinda left. What we've Hi, learned in working with families is that the siblings are just as much affected by the illness emotionally as the ill child is affected physically. Talk to us. What do we see? We're seeing the looking. What Friends of Karen does is we look at the impact of the illness on the whole family. And the brothers and sisters are deeply affected, sometimes even more so when all the attention is on the ill child. They're neglected. They're the ones, not a parent doesn't intend to, but by necessity, they have to spend time with their ill child. So our team of, um, we have child life specialists and expressive art therapists who come in and work with the kids and help them understand the illness and uh, help them develop coping skills. And part of what we do is we talk about family communication. We help mean? parents talk to their kids. Sometimes they can't even get the word cancer out of their mouth or culturally it may not be appropriate or they don't want to worry the kids. So we are there and providing, we're like best friends. Let me ask you, speaking of best friends, you've been in a not-for-profit business. You've, run a, you've been involved in another very well-known national nonprofit yeah. before this. If you could, I'll put you on the spot and yeah. share with us uh, a particular situation that has had a lasting impact on you, a family, a circumstance, a situation that you say, I know I'm with the right organization. Well, Friends of Karen is an incredible organization because we have an impact on someone's life every single day, multiple times mm. a day. Um, I'll tell you about what was the most difficult situation we ever had, or at least in my experience. And uh, we had a situation where a child was uh, diagnosed with leukemia and was on one floor at Sloan Kettering, and her dad was on a different floor at Sloan Kettering. Is this Adina? Uh, Adina. Adina. This is Adina. Adina um, Berkowitz. Yep, yeah, Adina. Okay. And uh, she, the dad, passed away in February, and uh, Adina was terminally ill. Yep, that's Adina. That's it, Adina Berkowitz. And uh, she's a, I ne never had the privilege of meeting her, but she always had a smile. And her, there's a picture of her brother, Justin. And Justin died unexpectedly right before Adina, a few days before him. The, the brother. The brother. The brother of uh, unknown circumstances. And there's Paula, uh, their mom. And she lost her family within her husband and her two children within a four-month period. And Friends of Karen was there for her the whole way. Um, and it was really the only time I ever saw the director of our family support program, who's an incredible professional and really a rock, lose it, um, 
But Paula Berkowitz is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She picked herself up. She started a special fund at Friends of Karen called the Adina's Angels Fund. Adina's Angels. By the yep. way, if someone goes onto your website, can they find yep, they a can connection find, yep, to Adina's they, Angels? I'm sorry. They can find Just a connection. Just we try to connect yep. people. Yeah, they can. They can find a connection to the Adina's your Angel Fund. Right now, so. And Paula has, every year since Adina died, has had a special event and has raised funds. She's raised about $250,000 for other families, particularly to help brothers and sisters. So this is a woman who, you know, if I ever had anything to complain about, I thought, yeah. would think again, I don't know how she gets out of bed in the morning. But her commitment to helping other families is phenomenal. And for me, that inspires me every single day. And there are so many people like that you, you realize what the strength is of the human spirit. It's amazing. Speaking of strength and the human spirit, you, you, um, you understand leadership in life in ways that some people may not. And I'm fascinated by this question. And people who watch one-on-one -on -one, uh, know I ask this question okay. of a lot of people. Um, put you on the spot, never tell you I was going to ask you this. <laughs> okay. The number one leadership lesson you have learned in your work. To what be was? passionate and to be inspiring. For me to bring my passion so that I can inspire others, both my staff, my board, our supporters, to realize that what they do really makes a difference. And I think that is my number one lesson. Got to bring a passion. Got to bring a passion. You got to feel it here. You got to feel it here. And it's easy. Here's because, not enough? No. It's got to it's gotta be here. It's got to be authentic, genuine. And I really believe in what we do. We are an amazing organization. I always say we're the greatest organization. I hope you never need to know. But if you need friends at Karen, you really need us by your side. When Judith you have a Factor. Kid. Judith Factor is executive director of a great organization, and we hope you never need to know. Friends of Karen, thank you so much. Keep thank up you. the important work. Thanks so much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Virtua, Partners for Health Foundation, Qualcare Inc., Johnson & Johnson, Kessler Foundation, and by ADP. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.